The Collins Dictionary Word of the Year for 2021 was NFTs or non-fungible tokens. But what exactly is a non-fungible token and how is it different to a fungible token? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Creator Economy Show. I hope you like the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this about the Creator Economy, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now, when I first heard about non-fungible tokens, I went straight to the dictionary. What exactly does the word fungible mean? Because it's fair to say that prior to 2021, fungible and non-fungible weren't really used that much in everyday conversations or online. To explain the difference between fungible and non-fungible, let's start with fungible tokens or the word fungible. So fungible is basically something that is divisible, replaceable and not unique. The classic example of a fungible token is fiat currency or traditional currency, the euro, the dollar, the lira or wherever you're or whatever country you're in. So if you get a $50 bill and I have a $50 bill, we can trade those with each other and there's not going to be any difference between the two $50 bills. In other words, they're interchangeable and replaceable. Another example of something that's fungible is, let's say we go to the Louvre Museum in Paris. We see the Mona Lisa and we take a picture of the Mona Lisa. I take a picture and you take a picture. We can trade those pictures with each other and they're pretty much worthless and replaceable. In other words, they're nothing like the Mona Lisa that we're looking at on the wall. Another example of something that's fungible is if you go into your local post office or you go into your local shop and you buy a book of stamps. If there's a dozen stamps in the booklet, all of those are replaceable. They're all worth the same amount. And if you lose one, you can quickly replace it with the other. If you go on to the Nike website and you buy a pair of new trainers, even if they're fancy trainers with Kanye West's name on them, and they haven't been worn or autographed or anything like that, they may be expensive, you may really like them, but they're still replaceable because you can return those trainers and get the exact same ones from Nike. Most cryptocurrencies and most cryptocurrency tokens are fungible. So if you bought a Bitcoin several years ago, you may feel sentimental about your Bitcoin, but the blockchain isn't sentimental. You can exchange that Bitcoin for another Bitcoin and when monetary wise, it's still worth the same amount of money. Similarly, if you own some Ethereum, you can exchange one Ethereum or one ETH for another ETH and it's worth the same amount and there's no difference between the two. In other words, you can't really feel sentimental about your Bitcoin or your Ethereum and it's replaceable. And not only that, but you, it's divisible. So you can break down your Bitcoin into Satoshi and you can give those Satoshi to different people or you can use them to buy goods and services online. Now let's cover the concept of non-fungible goods. So non-fungible goods are unique and indivisible and hard or almost impossible to replace. So let's return to some of the examples I talked about there a few moments ago. Instead of buying a booklet of stamps, you found a rare stamp that your grandfather bought years ago, kept and collected. A rare stamp has been known to trade hands for six and seven figures. So if you lose this rare stamp, you can't easily replace it with another and there may not even be any more in existence. In this case, the stamp is non-fungible. Comic book covers are another example of non-fungible goods. So the first Superman comic book cover is worth seven figures today and almost impossible to acquire. And many comic book collectors will play, pay a premium to get rare comic book covers that are hard to get. On the other hand, if you want to get the latest Superman comic, it'll be pretty easy to get that cover and to keep it and it won't cost that much. Let's return to the example of the Mona Lisa. <clears throat> so rather than taking photos of the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa itself is something that's non-fungible because it's unique and it's irreplaceable and it's priceless as a result. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I went into a rare bookshop in Dublin city centre and I bought this book. So it's a portrait of an artist by a young man by James Joyce and it's a 1944 edition. It cost me approximately 200 euro to buy this book. In this case, I'd consider this something that's non-fungible because I can easily go onto Amazon and I can buy a portrait of an artist as a young man for a couple of dollars on Kindle or I could probably get it for free on a Creative Commons uh, license. But if I lose this book, 
it's going to be impossible or near impossible to replace it because chances are there's not many editions from 1944 in publication. Another example is Kanye West's trainers. So you can buy Kanye West design trainers uh, on a sports goods store for a couple hundred dollars. But this trainers that Kanye West wore to the 2008 Grammys sold for $1.8 million to a collector who sounds like he's a, he or she has a lot of money to spend on Kanye West goods. And again, in this case, you can't replace those trainers or you can't break them up or give them to other people. NFTs are the ultimate example of non-fungible goods or non-fungible tokens. Let me explain why they are non-fungible and why they are unique and irreplaceable. Firstly, many NFTs are created with code. So they use code to create unique pieces of digital art. No one piece looks like the next. And to understand what I mean, just check out the Chromie Squiggles collection, which Artblocks released. Now you may look at this and think, but this is just a series of images that I can right click and save it to my desktop. But to digital art collectors in the know, these uh, pieces of digital art are irreplaceable and therefore non-fungible. NFTs are also non-fungible because you can't break up an NFT and give out little pieces to everybody else. In other words, if you bought a CryptoPunk or minted a CryptoPunk back in 2018, there's only a set amount of CryptoPunks in this collection. So you can't, if you lose your CryptoPunk because your wallet was hacked for some reason, it's not easy for you to replace it unless you have a lot of money. And even then you'll only be able to buy a different CryptoPunk from the collection. So NFTs, even though many of them will go to zero, are supposed to be one of a kind. Whether you see a value in the NFT or not doesn't change the fact that it should be a non-fungible item that's irreplaceable. NFTs are also non-fungible because they live on the blockchain. In other words, there's a verifiable proof that these are one of a kind and who the owner is. So while anybody can go on to OpenSea or an NFT marketplace, and right click save as, that's the equivalent of going to see the Mona Lisa and photographing it with your phone. While you may have the image on your desktop, while you may have the photograph of the Mona Lisa uh, on your phone, it's not the same as actually owning the Mona Lisa or a rare piece of art or owning a CryptoPunk or something from an art blocks collection. There you go, that's a quick overview of the difference between fungible and non-fungible tokens. I hope this helps you navigate or at least understand the NFT space and also learn more about the Collins Dictionary Word of the Year. If you enjoyed this video, hit thumbs up. To get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, then you might like this one next.